Now this is an ISCO anamorphic scope, which is the foundation of my uh, anamorphic setup that I've been trying to put together for about the last year, it seems. Uh, for something on a budget anyway, I mean, you can get other anamorphic lenses out there now from about three grand upwards. Uh, I've managed to put together this setup and the images you've just seen for half that, probably less than half that. Uh, I got this uh, ISCO modified scope for about, I think, £500 online from a, a guy in the UK actually who modifies uh, anamorphic scopes to shorten them down a bit because, I mean, these things are heavy anyway. This, this already weighs about a kilogram, but I think originally it was way longer. Now, these scopes were originally used to project uh, anamorphic film as opposed to receive and record, so to speak. Uh, they were used, I guess, in theatres or in editing suites. This being for the 35mm film version, um, for the wider real estate of the 35mm film. So the guy who modified this lens is called Marius, he's based in the UK. I'll put a link to his website in the description. And uh, from what I can tell, he's modifying uh, anamorphic scopes uh, to make them more handleable, because these things are quite long, particularly the 35 millimeter version, which I've got, which is the, the big beast of a version. He's modifying these lenses so that they've got screw mounts on either end, so that you can obviously thread it onto your taking lens, which is a crucial part of the process. So this is a three part system, which is kind of common. But it's more, more common is a two part system where you've got the taking lens, and you've got your anamorphic scope, which is the key thing, which is what creates the, the D-squeeze, the anamorphic look. And in front of that, to help focusing, I bought the Rapido Technologies Diopter. Now, the Rapido Focusing Diopter is a beautiful piece of equipment. It really, really does help you focus like a normal lens, basically. It's, there's a huge focus ring on the front, which is geared. So you can just focus normally, which changes everything. You feel like you're actually using a normal lens. Even though it's a bit tricky, you're basically focusing three lenses. You've got the taking lens, which needs to be set at 0.9 meters. You've got the, the anamorphic scope, which needs to be set at 0.9 meters, uh, which is important for this setup. You need to have a scope that is either set for this particular day up to is 0.9 meters, but unfortunately my scope focuses, which is the beauty of using the ISCO ones, which Marius adapts for you. I mean, yes, it does add a bit more weight to your setup because it the focusing diopter is at least another kilogram, perhaps more. Uh, so you're, you're creating for yourself a real heavy setup, which is the only drawback of this, this anamorphic setup is the weight of it. If you're gonna use a tripod, which I'd probably recommend, then you'll be fine. I've been using shoulder mount on the Ursa Mini, which is, is workable. The shoulder takes most of the weight and it's doable. And you know, trust me, it's so, so worth it for the look. One minor, minor point I have about the Rapido service. It's a great, great service. Uh, they've got, I think, a warehouse in Europe and the US, so they can get uh, a day up to two super easy. The only issue I do have, it comes in a, a used, battered old case with a really rubbish lens cap. And I, I think if you're gonna spend a thousand dollars, they could throw in a new case and a decent lens cap. That's my only little gripe, but, oh, I mean, they're a small independent company, so I'm not gonna be too hard on them. I mean, what they make is fantastic. And Jim, who, who runs the company, I you can email him directly via his website and he's extremely helpful. Um, he talked me, well, he, he advised me or just confirmed my thoughts of what I thought was the best one to get for this anamorphic scope. Uh, and I can't say enough good things about their company. So like I said, if you're gonna use this setup or something similar, be prepared for it to be very heavy, particularly if you're gonna use it on something like the Ursa, which is already quite a big heavy camera with the V-mount included. Maybe this is a 10 kilogram setup at least. 
you really do need to be careful how you're going to shoot this. Like I said, running gunning is, is kind of possible if you're being kind to yourself and you're taking breaks, but you don't want too much of a long day with this setup. Mounted on the shoulder is definitely the way I'd recommend if you're going to be moving around. It's too big for any gimbal that I own. I mean, I recently bought the uh, the Ronin gimbal. Like I said, I haven't done an episode on that yet, but it's too far too heavy for that. Other anamorphic lenses that are on the market now, which didn't really exist like two, three years ago. Uh, you've got the Vazen anamorphic for about three grand, uh, Atlas Orion for about seven grand. So, I mean, the prices escalate pretty quick. So to be able to get this set up for about 1500, you're talking, I don't know, in English money, about eight, 800 pounds for the Rapido Diopter, about 500 for the Isco anamorphic scope. And you should already have a taking lens that you can use. I mean, I've got a choice of a few. I'm using a Zeiss 35 millimeter. Uh, and a Pentax 55mm. Uh, there's a few step up rings involved as well to fit each uh, piece together, which again is part of the fiddly process, which is probably why, if you're going to spend three grand upwards on an anamorphic lens, it's so nice just to have a complete single lens that you just, you know, just click into the mount and away you go. This is a fiddly setup, don't get me wrong. Uh, but once you've got it all lined up and it's working well, which it does, the images speak for themselves. Now to shoot with this setup, you do need a 4x3 sensor mode on your camera, which is more, more and more common these days. The Ursa, which I'm using this on exclusively, has a 4x3 anamorphic mode. The GH5, which I'm using here, has a 4x3 anamorphic mode, which is key really, because you need to do that de-squeeze in post, which is how you really get that squeezed anamorphic look. And this is a two times squeeze anamorphic, which really is you know the maximum anamorphic look. The SLR Magic in the series, they're probably fine for five, six hundred pounds, but I think they just work on a normal Super 35 sensor and you're not you're not really doing any de-squeeze in post as far as I can remember when I own the SLR Magic. And the look is nice, it's fine, it's a nice step away from spherical lenses, but for me it didn't really have the you know the true power and the, the look of the anamorphic. It was always a bit of a you know kind of a halfway light anamorphic look. The beauty of this is you can you can change your focal length uh, using the, the taking lens. I mean, I'm using a 35 millimeter Zeiss, which gives me quite a wide look. You can go in a bit with a 55 or an 85 millimeter. So that's nice. You've got basically, I, I've essentially got three different anamorphic lens focal lengths available to me for this price, because these were lenses that I already owned. They're just spherical taking lenses. And again, as long as you can line them up with focusing rings and you know, it, it kind of pretty much works. I mean, the images speak for themselves, right? A couple of great YouTube channels to check out along this subject who are far more informative than me are obviously Tito Feridans, who's like the anamorphic or anamorphic alternative king on YouTube, it's got to be said. And lately, Media Division did an amazing two or three part series on anamorphics, which are quite long. I think they're an hour each, but they are 100% worth watching, which gives you the whole history of anamorphic how an anamorphic image works and the alternatives to a 20 grand or even a five grand anamorphic lens. He talks about using these anamorphic scopes with a taking lens and the different sizes. So I'll put those links in the description as well. I highly recommend checking those guys out. Mm -hmm. 